21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. The marketplace has become a lot more sophisticated in terms of what they'll believe. Uh -huh. So, you know, it depends how far we go back. We could roll the clock back a couple of hundred years to, you know, someone in the Wild West selling bottles of snake oil off the back of their, their wagon. Uh, go through to the 1950s, um, where there was um, a lot of fear and desire used in marketing uh, and scarcity, and that scarcity rolls through to, you know, 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, where now we have infomercials with uh, offering free steak knives, countdown timers, orders of first 100. So, so that style of marketing is continuing. I wouldn't say it's been replaced, but I think when we're looking at a sophisticated buying marketplace, such as perhaps management consultants, uh, executive coaches, corporate trainers, financial planners, my market, they're a hell of a lot more sophisticated than that. They're not going to buy not going to put $18,000 down for a program just because they're going to get a free set of steak knives. Um, they don't tend to respond to scarcity tactics, which are almost always um, manufactured. And it's just not their first rodeo. You know, we're talking about people that are 50, you know, perhaps 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 years old. And they've been through so many pitches um, that they're sick of it. And they smell bullshit about 100 miles away. And so when they're presented with a value proposition which is clear and honest and transparent and it makes sense, they tend to be far more responsive to that than they would be any fancy pants formula as such. I think, I think one of the defining characteristics of leadsology is that the leads are coming in. Uh -huh. We're not chasing leads. So we're not doing any cold calling, telemarketing. We're not sending out 10,000 direct mail letters. We're not going to business networking meetings. All of this is what we call outbound marketing, where leadsology is inbound. So we are creating, the best way I can describe it is if you, the best analogy is if you could imagine a forest full of 100 sleeping bears. And we know that three of those sleeping bears are hungry, but we don't know which three are hungry. So what traditional sales does is it would go running through the forest with a sharp stick, jabbing each bear in the bum one by one and waking the bear up and kind of waving the honey pot in front of the nose of the bear. And if the bear's hunger exceeds its anger, it eats the honey and not you. So that's traditional outbound sales and marketing. In other words, we're disturbing a lot of people who we don't know if have a need for our product or service. The leadsology philosophy is that we take that same honey pot and we just place it outside the forest. And then those bears that are hungry will wake up because they've smelt the honey and they'll come out of the forest. So that's metaphorically speaking, the difference between traditional outbound sales and marketing versus inbound. Because we're only wanting to meet with people who have expressed an interest in what we have, it's much more efficient and it's much more effective. There's 10 parts to the leadsology model. So there are 10 elements to what generates a systematic weekly flow of inbound leads uh, week in, week out. Um, so there's, you know, if we look at just the first four parts, there's the magic. So someone has to be able to offer a service which is transformational. There needs to be a measurable and significant improvement in the client's results. Otherwise, it's incredibly hard to market. Um, so that's the magic. The second thing is the market, we have to be absolutely clear about who the ideal client is, uh, what I call the beachhead, which is another little metaphor about which part of the market are we going to target on, and then establish systematically and predictably our marketing results as well as our value delivery so that we confirm that we're very good at those two things prior to expansion. So there's the magic, the market, uh, the message, which is what do what does our ideal client have to hear or, or or read about our magic that would get cut through and would want to want them to know more. And then finally is the mediums. The mediums answer the questions, well, how are we going to get the message about our magic out to the market? So that are the first four parts of the model. And the I would argue the most important part. So you can you can um, pay a, a little attention to the other parts of the model and still get good results, but ignore any one of those four parts and you're doomed to failure. You're just going to struggle and you may be wondering why, but 
but it'll be because you've neglected one of those four elements, the magic, the market, the, the mediums, or the message. So to be less cryptic, um, marketing the invisible and ideology as such is quite uh, prescriptive. It's very precise in, in my recommendations. Someone once said, and I can't remember who said it, but he said, the philosophers are people who know less and less about more and more until they know nothing about everything. Whereas scientists are people who know more and more about less and less until they know everything about nothing. And legiology is more of a science than a philosophy. So it's quite, there's a very, there's a narrow part of the, of the marketplace that it applies especially well to. But for those people that it does apply to, it works extraordinarily well. And you, you often get that in marketing and that the more narrow you are in your focus, then the deeper the impact. People say the smaller the niche, the bigger the market, that type of thing. Um, so with leadology to put some, put some flesh on the bone, so to speak, I've talked about inbound leads, I've talked about systematic, predictable, and so on. What it looks like uh, in, 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 if we bring the whole thing to life, if we move from the principles, which we've talked about, to the prescription, we run online meetings for people who have an interest in learning about our services. The management consultant, executive coach, uh, corporate trainer, financial planner, that's what we're doing, is we're running a very smart, but very transparent, very honest, and very uh, direct value proposition that says, look, in my case, if you want to see how independent professionals from London through New York to Sydney are generating high quality inbound leads every week, then come along to the online presentation. So that's pretty prescriptive. If someone isn't interested in an online presentation, then they're filtered out. Um, if the timing's not right, they're filtered out. Um, so, so it's very prescriptive. It's not an online, it's not a free online training. It's a demonstration. So once we put that, that online presentation together and there's a, a sequence to that in my latest book, Leadsology Marketing Invisible, I outline what I call the persuasion sequence. So we want to lead people through and we want to both speak to their unconscious as well as their conscious. And the, the persuasion sequence is designed to do that. Classic mistakes that people often make with presentations, be they online or offline, is that they'll fail to speak to the unconscious. So when I speak to the unconscious people, I talk about waking up on a Monday morning, opening up your calendar online and feeling a smile spit across your face as you look at your calendar and see a number of bookings made by people who want to talk about becoming a client. So that will wake up something in the unconscious mind of my ideal client who is highly desirous of that experience, wake up on a Monday morning, feel the smile spread across the faces, the sipping the coffee, seeing bookings from people who are interested in becoming a client. And you can go on and those, those people know how much your fees are and they regard you as being, if not one of the most highly desirable suppliers, quite probably the only supplier of choice. But having woken up the unconscious, and you'll notice that if, if we're at this stage of the presentation, we're about a quarter of the way through the presentation. We haven't talked about a solution yet. Um, we, we then have to talk about the things that don't work. If we're wanting to experience that reality of waking up on a Monday morning, checking the calendar and so on, we have to talk about the things that don't work because we've got to eliminate from the mind of the audience other options that are less effective or that are less efficient. Eventually, the presentation will get to the demonstration. And the demonstration satisfies the conscious mind because it explains in simple and clear terms how your solution works. The first half of the presentation is about the unconscious. The second half is about the conscious. So very often people will go into the conscious explanation of how their service works before they've uncovered, satisfied the unconscious mind. So we haven't woken up any dormant buying motivations and yet we're going into a solution without increasing desire. We've got to increase desire, eliminate competitors, all that we have to do all of that before we present the solution. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. There's an old saying that people buy on emotion and justify it after the purchase just with logic. 
it's almost right in a sophisticated market. People, you do still have to wake people up with emotion, but they have to justify the purchase rationally and logically before they order, not afterwards. And so what we're wanting to do is, is there's another thing in the brain called the reticular activating system. So they're all RAS, which filters in relevant information, relevant to solving, taking pain away or pursuit of pleasure or potential um, and filters out anything that can't help with that. So anything that's important gets filtered in. So if people are looking for a solution that'll help them get new clients in every week, high quality, et cetera, inbound, and they see a message like the one behind me, you know, enjoy a weekly flow of inbound new client inquiries, then the reticular activating system is going to filter that in. This is something we need to pay attention to. But once they get to the meeting, we still need to satisfy the unconscious and wake up that desire. Absolutely all psychology. I mean, if you look at what more good marketing does in my world, um, it removes, it, it creates offers for people who, and those people find it hard to resist that offer. That's what good marketing does. Um, you did use another metaphor, a hundred meter hurdle track. Well, let's just say it's a hundred meter track, an athletic track. And, we put our pot of gold across the finish line. That's our value proposition. That's what we want people to buy. And we could imagine the prospects standing at the start line, but we wonder why they're not moving towards the pot of gold. We wonder why they're not running down the track and diving into our pot of gold. Uh, because for us, it's pretty obvious that they'll benefit from it. What we often don't see as marketers is what the prospect sees, which is a series of hurdles between them and the pot of gold. And hurdles are things like risk, things like trust, Things like, will I get a return on investment? Good marketing removes all those hurdles. The other thing we often don't see is what the prospect sees. As soon as they like the look of our pot of gold and we've removed the hurdles, in almost a split second, they consider other options. So these are like detours off the side of the 100 meter track between them and the pot of gold. These are other options. So good marketing will seal those options off and will communicate clearly why they are less desirable options. So all that our prospect is left with standing behind the start line. Now, once we've done some good marketing is a clear track between them and the pot of gold. They still need to move towards it, but now there's no other options and there's no hurdles. So it's kind of a no brainer. They look and they go, there's no reason why I wouldn't do that. It's what I want. There aren't any other valid options and there's no hurdles. Let's move ahead. Where it always feels good. 21st Century Entrepreneurship with Martin Piskarik. Well, I, I would say it's ethical manipulation. There's no question it's manipulation. We're wanting to persuade someone that our point of view is, is it would be beneficial for them if they adopted it. Um, so I, I think that's manipulation. You know, good marketing is ethically cunning. Ethics, um, you know, if it's, it's obedience to the unenforceable. You can, get, you can do things which are legally you will get away with, but are not ethical. A lot of people do that all the time with marketing. They promise something the product can't deliver on. Um, the bullshit artists and the hype merchants. Um, so is it ethical? Isn't it ethical? Um, you know, the, one of the tests that, that I have is if, you know, I answered the door at, uh, you know, six o'clock in the evening and, um, you know, answered the front door and there was a whole film crew there and there were floodlights and there was a reporter and there's a microphone and they, thrashed the microphone in front of my face and said, Mr. Poland, is it true that you X, Y, Z? And they mentioned one of my marketing practices. Would I feel comfortable about my response to that? Hmm. Or would I squirm? And would I want, not want my friends and family in the world to know about that? If I'm comfortable about my response, it's probably an ethical practice that I've engaged in. And if I seek to evade the question or I'm uncomfortable, that's probably unethical. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting subject, actually, the whole, the whole realm of, of ethics and manipulation and so on. Mm. Uh, the, old, the old adage is not bad. You know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto yourself. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. So, so if we're talking about boundaries or parameters or protocols, et cetera, um, I, I, I'm wedded to the idea that marketing needs to be open, honest, and transparent. And very often the difference between effective marketing that's bullshit and effective marketing that's ethical and honest and transparent is simply the way 
the value proposition is articulated. So in other words, someone can dress the thing up to be something it's not uh, and sell it probably very well, but fail to deliver on the promise. Um, if you, if you, you know, for example, let's say, let's say for sake of example, take one of my programs. People often ask me how long does it take to complete the program and get some leads coming in? And I say, give me eight hours a week over eight weeks. That's how long you need. And if someone said to me, Oh, that's no good. I need new clients faster than that. I say, sorry, but you know, try and find someone else that can help you with that. Um, but my stuff takes eight hours a week over eight weeks. If you in, commit yourself diligently to doing those 64 hours, you're going to get some pretty good results. Now I could dress that up and say, ah, pfft, give me four minutes a day. You'll be fine. Will I sell more product? In the short term, I probably will, but I, I'm a believer in karma. I've chosen to believe in karma. And I don't know if karma is real or not, but I think if everyone believed it was, the world would be a better place. And it's kind of like reap what you sow or do unto others or do the right thing by people. Um, but if I, if I think about the fact, if I think about the likelihood, which karma suggests that I am going to reap what I sow, then if I bullshit other people, I'm going to be bullshitted. And I don't want that in my life. Uh, then I just need to be, tell people in this case, why the eight hours a week is a positive thing, not a negative thing. I can explain that it takes time to build something of substance or something of quality. And they're really the eight hours a week when they compare that over an eight week period to a lifetime of security and prosperity from leads coming in. Then I think I've just illustrated the difference between people who feel they have to market ways uh, in, a, in a way which is bullshit and people who have a creative idea and can articulate um, their, their value proposition in a way that makes sense and still has people buying. So if people want to know a bit more about Leadsology and the science of being demand, of course, they can go to Amazon and buy the book. Uh, but if they want to get started on some real practical lead generation, it's not the entire Leadsology model by any means, but it's completely free. And it's designed to be implemented in just five days at one hour a day. They can go to fivehourchallenge.com. That's the, the number, sorry, the word five, F-I-V-E, hourchallenge.com. And it's a simple little exercise there's a 10 minute video delivered every day over five days. And if you add up the time of the 10 minutes sitting and watching the video and the 50 minutes that takes to complete the action item from each day, then you should generate five fresh leads at the end of that five days. So that's something that people kind of dip their toe in the water and, and have a look at the, the science of creating an effective marketing message and using it to generate some prospects. If you enjoyed today's show, please head over to iTunes, give us a rating, and leave a review. 